A major Canadian Muslim group is demanding an apology from Stephen Harper and Stephen Harper's chief spokesman, uh, Jason McDonald. The National Council of Canadian Muslims says the PMO smeared its organization, libeled it, linking the council to the militant group Hamas, considered a terrorist organization by Canada. The organization has fired, uh, filed a notice of libel in an Ontario court accusing Jason McDonald of acting maliciously when responding to the group's concerns. The council had criticized the inclusion of a controversial rabbi on Stephen Harper's delegation in the Middle East last week, and that's when Jason McDonald uh, responded saying that the government will not take any um, criticism from an organization, and then he alleged that there were certain ties uh, to militant organization. So what will happen next, and what's the response from the PMO? First of all, let's hear from the executive director of the National Council of Canadian Muslims, Hassan Gardi. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. Why did you file this notice of libel? Well, Evan, the way that we see this is that what this amounts to is old school dirty pool. Ask any school kid, Evan, they'll tell you this is schoolyard bully tactics, an attempt to silence dissent from anybody who has a differing view or anybody who asks a question of this government that is more difficult to answer than did the sun rise in the east this morning. All right. Uh, what do you want from Jason McDonald and Stephen Harper? We want nothing less than a full-throated, unqualified apology and retraction of this statement. If you don't get it, what happens? Well, then we will proceed further. Uh, if we don't get it, then we will proceed further. I asked Jason McDonald and I asked the Prime Minister's office for a response. Here's what they said to us uh, very quickly. Got no response, obviously, as this matter may be subject to litigation. We have no further comment. But I did ask John Baird, and I, don't, I think you watched it. Here's what John Baird uh, said when I asked about the comments in your group. Here's what he said. Well, obviously, if the group has put a uh, notice beyond, in front of a court, uh, I'm prevented from commenting on it, but I'd encourage any Canadian uh, to Google the group in question uh, and do some research on their own and come to their own conclusions. No comment there, but saying Google the group, which uh, obviously people do. What do you make of what he said? Well, if that's the best they can do, Evan, I mean, Google the group. If it's on the Internet, it must be true. Come on. If they have something on our organization, we're calling on them to show it. We've reached out to our partners in national security, including the RCMP, writing to them, asking them, do you have any concerns? And none of them have come back to us with any concerns. All right, so tell, tell me this. Uh, if you don't get the apology, what happens next? Well, if we don't receive the apology, then it, ta it goes to the next stage where a statement of claim would be made. We're hoping that the government will realize the error of this reckless statement and not uh, draw this pro process out. And we hope that they will give a full an unreserved retraction and apology to not just the NCCM, but also to all Canadian Muslims. Because, Evan, this doesn't just affect this organization. This is about anybody who voices dissent, who can and then will be the target of this office, of, of this government, whether it's environmentalists being called radical, uh, foreign-funded radicals, the muzzling of scientists, and so forth. Okay, but so you're prepared to go to court if you have to? If we have to, we are prepared to see this through. All right. Uh, your organization changed its name from CAIR CAN, CARE CAN, to the National Council of Canadian Muslims in July of 2013. There have been allegations that your, the organization, when it began, was linked to the Council on American Islamic Relations, okay? And that organization has been subject to its own controversies. So, why did you change your name? Was it to disassociate yourself from the American organization? We, ch we evolved, and the name of the organization, as you pointed out, changed last year, in July of last year. The name of the organization was originally CARE, because CARE, Care Can, because CARE in the U.S. is a well-known, well-recognized Muslim civil liberties organization. But we are two separate and distinct organizations. We always have been. We've always you don't had share board separate, members? We don't have, we have separate board members, separate staff. We've never had any funding relationship with them. So you them. have the same name, but you say you've never had a relationship with some say that they considered uh, the Canadian version a branch plant. Well, uh, Evan, what I can tell you is we've never had uh, any funding relationship with them, never any operational relationship with them. We have always had two separate board of directors, constitutions, bylaws. Uh, employees and so why did you call yourself the Council of American Islamic Relations? I mean that that is some people say there's board member links or mentorship links or learning There was no links, but you chose the same name Evan The organization as I mentioned and I just told you went with that name because it was a well-recognized Name within Muslim civil liberties movement 
but this is not the issue today. The office of the Prime Minister has today linked NCCM to a known terrorist entity, and that is why we are taking this action today. All right. I, I, the Department of Justice, April 28, 2009, uh, there's a letter here from Richard Powers, Assistant Director of the Office of Congressional Affairs, and, and this is about, to a senator, and it's, this is about CARE, CIR, this is in the, in the U.S., and it says, as you know, CARE was named as an unindicted co-conspirator of the Holy Land Foundation for Relief and Developments in the United States versus Holy Land Foundation. During the trial, it says here, evidence was introduced that demonstrated a relationship among CARE, individual CARE founders, and the Palestine Committee. Evidence was also introduced that demonstrated a relationship between the Palestine Committee and Hamas, which was designated as a terrorist organization in 95. In light of the evidence, the FBI has suspended all former contacts with CARE and the FBI. So there's a, there's a letter from the Justice Department linking CAIR in this regard to Hamas in this letter. What do you make of that? Evan, CARE in the U.S. is a, recognized by the U.S. government as a tax-exempt organization. And I think that says a lot. If you have questions regarding CARE, I would certainly direct you to them. They are more than fully capable of uh, defending their own record. We are a fully independent, autonomous organization that's been active in Canada for the past 14 years in the areas of civic engagement, anti-extremism, human rights and civil liberties. Our public record speaks for itself, Evan. All right. Uh, you know, when John Barrett said Google, and there's a lot on Google, huh? you know, uh, and there are articles that say certain board members have had links to certain organizations, and they, there's a links back that can touch organizations like Hamas. Are you telling us, just to, let me just be clear, that no board member, no member of your group has any links to organizations that have been linked to Hamas, nothing. Evan, we are two separate and autonomous organizations. It's like Pepsi and Coke. They do Muslim civil liberties work in the U.S. We do it here in Canada. I mean, to be fair, until you changed the name, it wasn't like Pepsi and Coke. It was like Coke and then another Coke <laughs> with the same name. But you're saying there was different stuff in the bottle. Evan, we are, we are, as I've told you, we are and always have been a separate and independent and autonomous organization. But the real issue today, Evan, is not that. The real issue is the Prime Minister's office making a defamatory statement against an organization with a known public track record. We have received statements of support from our civil society allies, including the British Columbia Civil Liberties Association, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, Amnesty International Canada, the Canadian Association of Jews and Muslims, and it goes on, the Canadian Association of University Teachers, organizations who have worked alongside us, who know our record, uh, and we've received letters as well from Canadians across this country concerned about this attempt to silence dissent yet again from the office of the Prime Minister and from this government. And so have you heard anything back from the Prime Minister's office? Regrettably, we haven't heard from them. We did try last week to meet with them, but they wouldn't meet with us. We took that as a signal that, Evan, they're not interested in dialogue. They're only interested in throwing sucker punches and trying to tar organizations, reputable organizations, with allegations without providing any proof. Evan, this is something that I have to just say doesn't just affect NCCM and doesn't just affect our ability to work with partners, our ability to fundraise and so forth. It also affects the individuals and the staff members and the volunteers whose ability to travel, work, and work within our communities could be impacted by this and it also affects the broader image by reinforcing ugly stereotypes about Canadian Muslims. All right, uh, but I, uh, what will happen is the background and the roots of the organization will be looked into and you're, you're prepared for that. Any roots, for, of, of, if there are any links, you're prepared for You're happy to go through all We're that. We're absolutely prepared for it, Evan. Uh, last question to you. How fast do you need an apology from either the Prime Minister and or Mr. McDonald in order to you to proceed to that statement of claim, the next stage of the libel action? Well, Evan, the ball is now in the government's court. And when we receive the apology, if we receive it, it'll, a lot of things will have to take place. Looking at the nature, quality, and timeliness of the apology will all be considerations we take when we determine what the next steps will be. All right, I've got to leave it there. Uh, a very interesting, but so the timeline is weeks, months, days, what do you want? Well, the sooner the better, because obviously this hangs over our head and it creates a cloud of suspicion that's unwarranted and something that we fully will stand, stand up against and challenge. Isan Gardi, Executive Director of the National Council of Canadian Muslims, issued a notice of libel today against Jason McDonald, the DCOM of the uh, Director of Communications for the Prime Minister, demanding an apology from the Prime Minister. And Mr. McDonald will be following this story. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Evan. <laughs>